20 years ago at uni, I did a project on the grey-headed flying fox. And the issue at the time was that there was too many flying foxes migrating down from the north, which I do every year, but then staying for the winter in Fern Gully here in the Botanical Gardens. There was about 5,000 of them reported to be here and they were destroying the garden. So the program was to re-release them or, or to uh, move them onto Yarra Bend in Kew or Fairfield area, which I think has been successful, but I thought I'd come down to Fern Gully and see if there's still any left here. Why didn't you go to the park? There's a flying fox there. <laughs> So I remember visiting here and that you could hear the noise of the bats, you could smell them, they were really prominent and now I can't find a single one. And I dare say all these palms and ferns that the bats were feeding on have been able to recover. I come across a lovely lady who knows a little bit more about the situation than I. Many years ago um, the area was devastated with the bats yep. and so a team of um, members from the garden made life a little bit more uncomfortable for them oh. and made lots of noise you know banging um, saucepans and clanging saucepans just to make their habitat uncomfortable and whatnot so they moved on. Unreal. So we've made it to Yarra Bend and instantly tell that the relocation program all those years ago was a huge success because there are roosting grey-headed flying foxes absolutely everywhere. There are thousands of them. Bats are nocturnal, so all these grey-headed flying foxes are sleeping during the day, although largely some are quite awake and flying around and some are squabbling. It's like they get angry at each other if they wake each other up during the day. It's quite funny to watch. Then that, at night time, they'll leave their camp, spread all over the city of Melbourne, up to 40, 50 kilometres they'll fly to find mainly nectar and pollen, that's their preferred, and also fruit. So you may have an experience with a grey-headed flying fox in your fruit trees at home or in your garden somewhere. They're really noisy, you can hear the screeching behind me. Um, but otherwise they're really not any, any, any danger or any threat to us. Now you might be wondering why they sleep upside down. Well, it's actually a really energy efficient way to operate. They can lock their feet in and be able to relax with their feet locked in so they don't let go of the perch. But when they do need to fly, perhaps escape a predator, they can just unlock their feet, whoosh, they're down and they're flying all of a sudden. So it's extremely energy efficient for them. They don't poo on themselves, however. They will write themselves to poo and then they'll hang back down to have their sleep. They, they, are, they are the only mammal that can sustain flight and they're extremely important to the ecosystem because they are amazing with their seed dispersal and pollination. And despite what you see with the big numbers here at Yarra Bend, they are classified as vulnerable. I actually certainly recommend you come down here, perhaps on a weekend, with the kids and check them out here at Yarra Bend because it'll give you a better appreciation for them. They're actually really beautiful and really cool. And I'll tell you right now, I can't think of anywhere where you see a greater number of native mammals gathered together than here. It is quite awesome.